Welcome to Vermontitude, a collaborative effort between Great Eastern Radio, the Brattleboro Reformer, and BCTV to bring you the stories behind the stories on the topics you want to learn more about. Because there's always more, so there'll always be Vermontitude. Hosted by me, Peter Fish Case. Welcome to Vermontitude. New episodes drop every Tuesday and can be found by going to vermontitude.com, reformer.com, brattleboro.tv, and locally on Comcast Channel 1078. We come to you from our studios at the Innovation Box on Landmark Hill. I'm Peter Fish Case, and each week I cover the topics that are of concern to Wyndham County and the towns that reside within its borders. Joining us today, David Blistein, who meets the people where they're at on the street, and he works to try to understand their situations. He's an author, he's a documentary writer, and he can, his work can be found on Substack under Street Cred. David, welcome. Thank you. All right. This is a fun conversation we both care about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I find uh, what you're doing on Substack, uh, and, and just in general, um, Street Cred, very interesting. Can you give us just a quick origin of that? Yep, absolutely. Uh, I didn't quit my day job, but I have a lot of writing I do on my own. Also, yeah. one was called Writing Asides, things that writers do when they're not writing, which uh, includes napping, staring uh, out the window, things like that. Uh, and uh, I decided, well, one thing I do is hang out with people on the street. And so I said, well, I'll write about that. And the first person I wrote about was Melvin, someone that a lot of people knew on Elliott Street, just like cool 50s laid back guy. And I, I knew Melvin, I've talked to him a lot over the years. And I knew like, you know, if I did give him money, it went to pot and beer. It didn't go to yeah, worse yeah. things. So anyway, after that, I kind of liked it. And some people said, you know, you should write more. And uh, Substack's voluntary, but some people give you money, you know, pay for a subscription. Right. And I said, okay, well, I'll do a few of these and I'll give the subscription money to people on the street when I, I write about them. And sure. it was very interesting because the first time after I did it, I'm like everybody else. I walked out my door. I said, oh, I don't want to deal with that person today. Right. So I said, well, people are paying me to deal with that person. That's when I started really talking to people and, and writing about them. And I've done like 40 now. Not, not about 40 different people, though. I, I have sure. a list of 40 to 50 people that I know. If you ask me, I give you some information about them. Yeah. I know them enough. It, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Um, uh, you know, I was I had a chance to talk with you uh, be, before we went hot here. And, um, you know, uh, people think if you're doing this kind of work that you're approaching it um, as just this person who is just going to keep trying over and over again. But you you go into detail and talking about like, you know, I'll keep helping you. But, you know, like at some point in time, um, when the lies keep coming, I'm just going to stop. I mean, talk about that for a second. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been scammed. I've been lied to a lot. I'm pretty trusting soul. Uh, the, there are a couple of things I've really learned doing it. And one is that people need money for other things than drugs. Right. They need money for things like gas money to go visit their kid who's in custody. You right. know, they need money for copay for Suboxone, though I'm still trying to get to the bottom of copays for Suboxone. Yeah. That's uh, okay. They need money, of course, for food and stuff. Uh, so it's not all to go off and buy drugs. And so I began to understand that a little better. But then, you know, I hear these stories about, I know so many women who are allegedly pregnant. I know so many men and women who allegedly have cancer. And they just don't. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I'm kind of shocked, you know, when I find that out. And, but I'm not goal oriented. I'm not trying to improve their lives. That's not my job. My job is to write about them as individuals so that people know them as individuals. If you think about when we want to ban pan, panhandlers, have you ever talked to a panhandler? Do you know where they came from? Do you know what they need money for? Do you know where they sleep at night? Do you know if they checked in with uh, Groundworks? You know, I can tell you, as I say, about 30 or 40 people that I know the answers to those questions because I've talked to them. And then the money thing isn't that important. If I believe them, I believe them. If not, eventually okay. I give up. But I've given up on some people a couple of times. Yeah, a and couple of times. And, and, <laughs> gone, a... and gone back into the fray. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. All right, so um, I, I imagine a, a, a life on the street isn't easy. 
right? I mean, right. Have, you know, the, what's the old saying uh, there, but for the grace of God, go right. I, right? right? I mean, um, you know, grace of God, whatever that, we can pick that apart. That's another ep uh, episode of Vermontitude, I guess. Right. But, um, you know, I, I understand, um, you know, we, we had talked about this uh, the other night at the select board meeting, you know, and just saying like, you know, the, the simple things of just carrying your life's belonging on your back. That and, was interesting. And, and, the, and, and, and the weight of what that must feel like and not having any place to put it down or store it um was uh was the thing that came out like what what do you find um like to be the, the the biggest overarching thing that we may be missing from not having these conversations with these people i wish there was a list what i just said really of all the things they need money for besides drugs because right. people say oh they just need money for drugs no they need money for food sometimes so you right. can get food just about any time up at uh, the drop-in shelter mm -hmm. and you say that to per someone but it's 10 o'clock at night you know yeah. the different times of day uh, bizarre things about meds like uh, someone's in a hospital in massachusetts they come to vermont with the prescription they're on medicaid right prescription is not good until they get because they got it under Massachusetts Medicaid. So the biggest thing is there are things, the system is very complex. Mm -hmm. There's a waiting list for rentals. You know, the, it's very confusing. And that's what I didn't realize. It's very confusing to be poor, you know? And so when people talk about uh, having people reach out on the street, it's a really good idea. I used to think we need an ombudsman or woman on the street to help people deal with what they really need to deal with. Now I think, if I did it full time, I could deal with maybe six or seven. It's okay. a full time job. Yeah. They, gotta, they gotta get their IDs. They gotta find work if they can find work. Even if they have work, they gotta find clothes that look good enough to, or safe enough to go to the work. It's a lot. Yeah, no, there, there. It's a, it's a very complex situation. It's, it's interesting, and and you sh and you shine a light on that in the work that you do, at least in the stuff that with street cred, the stuff that I found right. on Substack, um, and uh, it's kind of meeting people where they're at having these conversations i'm like who's who's the is, is are you comfortable talking about like specific people right now like, I, i'm who? talking about uh, i'm comfortable not with names but you know right. people need know them people are talking about on the meeting i know the guy who rides around on the bike and has his foot swollen yeah is his foot really hurt or is he doing it for money i mean i kind of know the answer to these questions because uh -huh. i know him, i know his name i know where he came from i know the couple that was last uh winter uh on the corner of main and high with the dog that barked so loud yeah i know why the dog barked i know where they were staying so there's a lot to it you know i know who was tenting in the woods behind me so when you say that we should do this or should do this, you don't know the people you're talking about. And I think it's one thing when you say a kid should be at a uh, walk from the uh, uh, the theater, the Vermont theater, yeah. to the co-op. I think that's that's true. Somehow you have to make that a safe walk. But when you say we have to ban panhandling, yeah. right? And that's why I told you yesterday that putting boundaries, safe boundaries about the, what makes a lot more sense to me than so-called yeah. banning. Because I've talked to some of the people on the street. I said, what would happen? They said, oh, we'll just go someplace else. Right. We'll just, you know, it's not like we're going to stop doing these drugs or stop having to need, needing money. Yeah. You know. There's a, there was an interesting um, part in one of the sub stacks I listened to where you talked about um, what, what a panhandler and uh, I wish we could find a different term, hmm. uh, but for just the sake of everybody understanding what we're talking about, um, and and the amount of money that they can or cannot make, right. and it's not uh, what what rumors abound think. I mean, can you speak to that? So somebody's out there asking for money, how much are they making? They can make five bucks on a really good day. They can make eighty. A hundred. The ones I don't know about the people that stand at the exits. I know downtown. I don't yeah. know about the exits of the parking lots. But um, sometimes they don't, they never know. And I'm always surprised, you know, at how much they make or don't make. Yeah. But but the one thing that I would say is there's an urban legend in Brattleboro yeah. about people coming from the cities and kind of being pimped out to raise money and then being taken back and having their money taken. I can pretty much say, other people might know, that, Downtown, that's not true. Downtown. I have never met, I mean, there might be some, yeah. of the 40, 50 people I've talked to downtown. Some come from northern Vermont. Some come from New Hampshire. I come from Hinsdale. 
One comes from New Jersey that I know, but these are not people. These are our neighbors, depending on how big you think of a neighbors. Right. And um, so that urban legend, I'd like to stop. It could be true. They might be the price shop a lot. Hannaford's maybe that's true. Yeah. But um, but not downtown. Downtown are people that have been around for a while. Sometimes they grew up here. Sometimes they came here. It is a bit of a mecca. They say, well, let's have a let's have a, a shelter in an outlying town. Let's have a shelter in like. Jamaica, they should pay their fair share. What are they going to do when they get up in the morning? They have a place that, you know, they can sit around drinking coffee all day and then put the beds down. It's like, we got to think through the personal lives of people. And I, I should say we have to. I see a lot of that. As I said, listening to the select board last night, I feel a lot of people get that. Yeah. That they're individuals. And that was my goal introduce the individuals well they are individuals and I, and I often have said um, you know I don't I don't know what put people on the path um, that they're on how they got there but I can almost guarantee as they were growing up as as young children not a single one of them said you know what I want to be when I grow up right. I want to I want to be concerned about um, where I'm going to sleep at night I want to be concerned about where my next meal is I, I want to be dependent on a drug or, or an alcohol I, I don't think a single child thinks that way uh, and and you know I know we talk a lot about trauma-based um, training and, and things like that and you know I know that we also fatigue with terms like trauma-based training and, right. and all that, but it is just kind of meeting, as you do, meeting people where they're at on the street in that situation. Somebody uh, brought up at the last select board meeting um, a, a really a, a really valid point, I thought, of just saying, like, people won't go um, to an emergency room for a myriad of reasons. Could be just like, I don't know how to pay for it. Uh, I can't do that. I can't get there. I won't be accepted when I'm there. But if, if some, if medical services came to them on the street, they would allow treatment. I think we could use, if possible, and I've talked to the people hospital about this, I think we could use a little more on the street. It would save a lot of money. If people's infections, if they could walk in yeah. and get it, if they could have their feet treated, you know, I mean, that would save that would save money if that was possible, yeah. you know, to do. There are things, but it's not like the people at the hospital aren't aware of this, you know. Yeah. They're trying to see. find, that's why they try to start the Groundworks, Healthworks, and so on and so yeah. forth. And the trauma thing's interesting. I, When people, I feel, go too deeply into trauma-informed care, well, Dave, do you, do you know anything about trauma-informed care? I say, no, but I know about human-informed care. And I think that's where we have to start. And I do say most people that I meet either had trauma in childhood or something happened in their adulthood, car accidents, uh, divorces, deaths. Sometimes the trauma came later, but I'd say, yeah, most people have had some fairly serious trauma. We've all had some, but yeah. fairly serious. And then they turned to drugs. Three years later, they realized they're in too deep. They try to find their way out. They can't get hired because they have some court record. It's it's a haul to yeah. get you back on your feet. Yeah. It's hard. It's not, it's not easy. Um, so I guess as, as we, um, bring this conversation in for a landing, but, and I feel bad because I feel like we could talk about this for hours. Probably could. Uh, like they did at the select board meeting last <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. Those, those, uh, those tend to go a little long. Um, but, um, like what is, if, if you were able just to sort of like sum it up for people, um, when they run into, um, are, are unhoused and, and these people who are out on the street, like what's. What's the number one thing you would want people to understand about these people? And and maybe that's not an easy question to answer, but I, I feel like you have the answer. I'd say you don't have to give them money. You, right. The best thing you can do is say, hey, how you doing? Okay. They might just say, hey, how you doing? Treat them like a person. And sometimes that's a mistake. You know, sometimes if you hand them a buck, they'll say F you. Like, yeah. you know, some of them are spoiled. Some of them are so hardened, you know. Yeah. But I just say, hey, how you doing? I think it, rather than walking down like this, you know, I just think that that's, in Vermont, we're small enough to do that. You know, we we recognize the people. You do not have to give them money. But I think treating them all like humans, and then if you're interested, you find out a little of their story. They love telling their stories. Yeah. You know, right. so. David, uh, thanks for jumping on Vermont to today. Uh, just refresh people. If they want to find uh, this body of work on Substack, I know your, your overarching thing is called Field of Vision. Field of Vision. called Street Cred, but tell us how to find it. DavidBlistein.substack.com. And because I've been doing Street Cred most recently, those those first ones that come up will be that. All right. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Peter.